good morning, happy Friday. So we're still in that time of year where one day is beautiful and one day could be stormy. And hopefully we are winding down that kind of season, although we know we have rest of March. Uh, today in the yoga 365 days, you see me use this book often these past few years. I got it one time I was in San Francisco in their antique in little old Chinatown, which I love. It's one of the oldest and biggest ones in outside of China. And this book was in a really cool kind of yoga crystal shop. And I love is that every day is a different daily wisdom for life on on and off the mat. And we often talk about things that we talk about here. I would love for it to translate into your regular everyday life. Today's reading is be proud of who you are. And it's one legged king pigeon. We don't do this pose often. I don't know if you can see that. King pigeon is a huge back bend. I used to do it effortlessly and I was proud of it. And then one day my teacher who's 10, 15 years older than me reminded me that just because you can doesn't mean you should. There are certain poses in yoga and you'll see pictures of yogis who spent their whole lives doing it. They're not good for our joints. They're not good for longevity. They're not good for aging. And um, what's amazing is we care more and more and more about the next picture. A lot of times there would be milestone birthdays historically and you would hit it and you'd be like, okay, that's it, I'm done. And now we are, what can we do to either de-age, and I follow a few guys, Dr. Mark Hyman and some others, Mac Laguerre, um, Darren Olian, a couple of them, and they all talk about de-aging, that this is the first time in history when we've looked at science, what we eat, and how can we reverse aging instead of accepting it. To make a long story short, one-legged king pigeon pose, Eka para Raja Pukatasana. Eka para Raja Kapotasana. Remember the word asana is at the end of every Sanskrit pose we talk about. Picture a pigeon's full rounded chest of iridescent feathers gleaming in the sun. While pigeons are often considered to be ordinary pets, they hold themselves proudly. Hold yourself proudly, that puffed up chest. Para Raja Kapotasana, the Sanskrit name for one-legged king pigeon pose. And maybe I will start to demo it, but I haven't done it in years. Eka means one, Pada means leg or foot, and Raja means king. So there's that puff chest. Kapoda means pigeon. From downward facing dog, slide one knee forward. So quite often that's how we come into pigeon if we were in a flow. Um, to the one side, extend your other leg behind you, lower your pelvis to the ground and bend your knee and grab your foot. Well, we often don't do that grab the foot piece. I like to do a kinder, gentler form of pigeon. Um, open your chest towards the sky like a pigeon and lift your heart up, fully expressing who you are. Maybe you are in a point in your life when you don't get the opportunity to fully express who you are. And so quite often we talk about homework. Imagine that that was your homework. Is there something in your life that you feel you don't get to fully express right now? Um, is there something holding you back? Finances, body type, um, your job, your family, um, regret, fear, what's holding you back? So we're gonna come to the floor. I was gonna do our yoga game again. And again, I was inspired by this pigeon pose we wound up reading about. So let's do a variety of things with our body on the mat to help our lives be more liberated in our body but also so we can come into that pose, pigeon, king pigeon, recline pigeon, uh, a little more easily. Let's come to the mat. Take this time with your body. I call this a little gift I give to my body. I'm gonna bring my bum as close to my heels. Take a moment, arms soft 45 or a little wider. And take the soles of the feet together and let the knees fall wide. This is our first check-in with our hips. Hey Google, turn volume down. I happen to have a set of blocks here. I'm gonna set them beside on their medium elevation behind each knee so that I can really open but be supported and not worry about any strain. I'd be curious if you did this pose now, no support. And then at the end of the class, read in the same pose, is your expression a lot bigger? Inhale one, exhale. Look for that letting go sensation in the hips. Maybe I'm gonna drop it down already. Whew. 
And instantly, I feel on my lower back. So you want to be kind to your body. Ahimsa, up. Do no harm. Inhale, two. Exhale. Inhale, three. Exhale. Inhale, four. Exhale. Inhale, five. Exhale, close the legs. And put those blocks out of the way for use for later. And we don't do windshield wiper as much as we used to do in person. So walking the feet as wide as it feels good. Knees are going to fall to the left. My right hip wants to lift off initially, so I'm going to honor that. Center, and then turn the knees to the right. Oh, what's happening in your left hip? Just get a little massage. Can you notice the interconnectivity between knee, thigh, hip tightness, and eventually lower back tightness? Center, knees to the left, check in. And then I'm going to go back and forth. Probably I'm going too quickly. And then back to center, knees to chest, little boat. Let's take our knees to the floor on the left. Right arm opens to a T. Gently pull the left hand, gently pulls the stack of knees to the earth. And turn and look to that right hand. Back to center little boat. Now we're going to take our knees to the right on the floor. Left arm opens to a T. Back to center, little boat. Or let's do some egg beaters because we are going to be working with open hips today. Right leg in, left foot in the air, lower. Pulling that right leg in. First, I want to rock the baby here. This is a variation of reclined pigeon. Flexing that foot, not only does it protect your knee, but I feel it turns on the glute and the thigh. Option to bind your hands around that foot and imagine that foot coming towards your left rib cage. Same action as when we do fire logging or thread the needle. Let's take left hand to right knee, take it all the way over, single leg spinal twist. Back to center, little boat. Left leg in, right leg slide straight, rock the baby. So you're going to grab hold of that left foot, left hand, left knee. If that's too tight, you're going to grab the shin, whatever works in your hip. Flex that foot and rock the baby. Option to take both hands binding on the flexed left foot and imagine that right left foot coming towards your right side, recline pigeon. Finally, let's turn it to a single leg spinal twist. Right hand, left knee, takes the knee all the way over, left shoulder anchored. Center, little boat, or egg beaters. While we're here, I really want to use some more work for our hips. So let's start with one block. Lift your hips. Right leg in, left leg slide straight. Two breaths, keeping that left heel on the floor. And I'm really trying to stretch this left hip while drawing the right thigh towards me. You can always bring your hands behind the shin, behind the thigh. Inhale, one. Exhale. On the exhale, can that right thigh sink a little deeper into your belly? Inhale, two. Exhale. Inhale, three. Let that left heel lift up and dangle the leg. Inhale, three. Exhale. Inhale, four. Exhale. And inhale, five. Exhale, switch. Left leg in right leg extends, 
First, the right heel is going to stay on the mat. Two breaths. Inhale, one. Exhale, keep the shoulders squat up. Inhale, two. Exhale. Inhale, three. Exhale on the. Now you're going to lift up that right heel. Dangle for two more breaths. Inhale, one. Exhale. Inhale, two. Exhale. Feet to the mat of your choice. We're going to do another round. You're going to either use the existing block or lift your bum up. Second block. Elevate. Let's take two breaths in a supported bridge. Inhale, one. Exhale. Inhale, two. Lift your chin slightly away from the chest. Exhale. Right leg in. Left leg's going to slide straight. It's definitely more precarious here. But I want to lift that left heel up right away. I find that person a little easier. And let that leg dangle. Woo! Inhale, one. Exhale. And if it's impossible, you're holding a fine stead. Inhale, two. Exhale, switch. Right heel down, left leg in. Right ankle dangles. Three breaths. Inhale, one. Exhale. Inhale, two. Exhale. Let's go one more. Inhale, three. Exhale, feet to the mat. Two breaths, supported bridge. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. And then get the hips away from the blocks. Feet in the air. Let's just point and flex a few times. Roll out the ankles. So if we were to do king pigeon, the other piece that lends itself to that is chest open, shoulder open, tight, neck is gone. And we've had a lot of requests for shoulders and neck. Um, legs fall wide. <clears throat> Pause here for a moment. I might even try to grab those toes. I'm going to take the legs closed, grab the strap, strap to the ball of the right foot. Gently lower left leg. Stir the right leg a little bit, waking up the hamstring. And then both straps in the right hand, leg to the side, left arm to a T. Two breaths. Inhale, one. Exhale. Inhale, two. Exhale. Back up to the sky, grab the strap and take it across the midline. First, a little bit is to stretch that IT band. And then a little further and all the way back up, <clears throat> get rid of the strap, a little bowed. Feet in the air, right leg's going to lower. Massage the left leg. Strap to the ball of the left foot. What does this hamstring feel like today? Maybe stir that leg. Both straps on the left hand, out to the side. Back to the sky, strap in the right hand, tiny bit to the right, stretch that IT band, maybe even massage it, and then take that leg all the way over. <laughs> Undo, child's, sorry, little boat. And we'll quickly do, because we're continuing the work with our hips, right foot flex onto left knee open, and draw that towards you. So you can make it into a full thread of the needle, you can just have your hands on your knees, drawing it toward you. You could choose to do it in cactus. And shake it out. Feet to the mat, left foot onto right knee, open. Draw it towards you, press the knee away. And shake it out. Roll onto your side. Come all the way up. And let's come to an extended, wide leg extended child's pose. We're trying to help those hips 
come to their maximum range of motion today. So tabletop, toes touching, knees wide, chest to the floor if that's available to you, and forehead down. One more breath. And then help yourself all the way up. With regards to our shoulders, let's take first one block, coming into prayer hands, palms on here, press palms into each other, and try to bring your head to the floor between your elbows. Push your bum back. Almost like a puppy, almost like a prayer pose, almost like an extended child's pose. I'm gonna add one more block, it's totally optional. Some of you may like no blocks. Palms on the block, the creases of your wrists line up at the top of the block. Press those spread palms into each other and attempt to bring the forehead to the mat. Good and come on up. And while we're here, let's do our dolphin series just to help the shoulders. So I like to either use no blocks, palms together, sphinx arms, even better is with a block. When you're ready, palms press down, tuck your toes. You're either looking forward, coming forward and back, or coming to a half plank, or walking into a short downward dog. If anything, this can become an indicator, a litmus test of what's happening in your shoulders today. And then come on out. Very nice. Let's quickly do two more shoulder things over here because I want our chest to be open. Let's take our arms to the sky, interlace the fingers, press the palms up, engage the core, and can you gently pull those arms back, forward, back, forward, back, forward. Some of us says it's going to happen, some of us it's not. Back and release. Switch your legs out, left ear, left shoulder, pause. Right ear, right shoulder, and come back to center. Another pose we love to do for our shoulders, usually this is a wall version. I can't recommend it enough. Right foot to the wall, right chest to the wall, right arm palm down to the wall. Left arm bent and push the floor wall away. I'll switch to the other side. I'm doing this quickly, then I'm gonna show you the floor version. Left blade to the wall, left hip to the wall, left breast to the wall, left palm to the wall. Right arm bent at the elbow, push the wall away, and come on out. And we're gonna do that one more time, but on a diagonal. Right foot, right chest, right hip, and this time the right arm is on a diagonal. And then back to center, switch. Left foot, left breast, left hip, left hand. Diagonal. And I feel it in my pec, this whole chest area. I know for some people it's in a different spot. The floor variation, coming to the mat, let's take right arm to a T, roll over on your side, head is off the mat, unless my earring rips out. Head is off the mat one or two inches, left arm up. Am I straight? <laughs> up. You could even add this, but this does nothing. This is for core. Optional, let that arm fall back, and then I'm going to switch. Left arm on the floor. See, I like the wall version better. Right arm pushes you back, or right arm in the sky, or fall behind you. And come on out. Okay, we've opened up our chest. Let's give our hips a little love. Why is this earring all weird? Okay. We have done mermaid before. Knees are bent. I'm gonna flip my legs to the left and attempt to sit up straight. What's happening here is we're internally rotating this left hip. If you've had a knee injury, quite often this knee is not gonna to come to the floor. Foot is flexed to increase what's happening and you have a choice to pull it in or press it out. I like it pulled in. Sitting up straight, tense fingers help you come up straight. And I can definitely feel this in my knees. I want to be gentle. And then switch. 
And if you have any knee injuries, you may be even more gentle with that side. The more we practice yoga or asana, the more we become aware of our body and whether it's habits and things that have been pre previous injuries, oh, or our body's trying to tell us something. Flex. Come on out and let's come back to bound angle. So soles of the feet together, pull it in as much as that feels good on your inner thighs, interlacing hands, binding. So you might stay here, gravity might do the work. You might gently press one side, then the other. You may hinge a little bit. Oh, and I notice that definitely increases what's happening in the inner thighs and hips, keeping the head up. Back is nice and long. And I'm not asking a fully forward fold. I just want to stretch this groin muscle here. Option of coming to diamond, but then it's not as much of an inner thigh hip stretch. Okay, another one I love for our hips. <clears throat> We're going to need blocks, possibly. I'm going to take a left foot beside left block. Right knee's at a right angle. Tuck those toes. Inch warm that leg back and untuck. The action or the effort is when I press this inner left knee into my outer left bicep. I can feel inner stuff happening into the left hip, but also as I'm imagining this right hip dropping down and stretching. Often to stay here or tuck and rise. Now it's quad and hip. Looking forward. Undo. Keep the hands there. This is more shoulder work. Extended child pose. Back upright, right foot beside right block. Choosing to stay at a right angle or inchworm back. Choosing to stay upright and I'll face you or tuck and rise. <laughs> I will really face you as I'm moving around with my blocks. Drop down, leave those blocks there. Extended child's pose. Another variation using these blocks to help the hips. Left foot to the beside the block. Staying at a right angle or inchworm back. Stay here or start to come into prayer pose. You can even bring them up a little. This is my tighter hip. So I'm going to come into prayer pose. Pressing that left knee into my left bicep. Option to stay here or even more, tuck and rise. Release, keep the blocks here. Extended child's pose. Back up right. Right foot beside right bicep. Interim leg back. Now I want to try to come down into here, keeping that right knee elevated or pressing into the right bicep. Option to tuck and rise. I can feel the knees splaying outwards. So to keep it more honest, I can bring these blocks up and <laughs> tuck and rise. Coming back to medium, extended child's pose. So sometimes I might feel like we're rushing through certain things. Quite often if I make a video longer than 30 minutes, it will take the whole day with YouTube to upload. So there's a reason that I have to keep things the length of time that they are. I do encourage you to take what we work on in class and add it to your day. Maybe take one or two of the poses and make them go a little longer. Let's start working on our pigeon again. Actually, we're going to do a seated rock the baby, just almost like a seated pigeon before we go into the next pigeon. So left leg out, <clears throat> I'm going to pick up my right bent leg, rock the baby. I flex my foot protects the joints, but also activates the muscles so that my joints aren't doing all the work. Choosing to stay here, or you could try to bring that shit calf towards your chest. You could put the right foot flex into the inner wrist, the elbow crease, or, oh, I can still do the monkey grip. Woohoo! So tight today. And I'm going to call that upright pigeon. I think it does have an actual name like that. Left leg bends 
And I want to rock this baby. This is my dominant hip. So, um, and the dominant hip matches the dominant hand side of the body. So I can stay here. I can try to bring it in closer or I can try to bind. Whew. Undo, roll the ankles. Now we're ready to do swan. Swan is, I had never experienced swan. I was always forced into full pigeon in some classes I would go to. Swan is a gentler, more delicate way of coming into pigeon. Tabletop, right knee walk comes forward towards the wrist, left leg stretches out. I haven't done anything, I'll show you straight on. I haven't pivoted anything. This may be enough. Key here is keeping the hips squared off. This might be it, and I'm gonna come back to tabletop and do the other side. Left knee forward, right leg back, untuck. There's no dumping in the hips. Keep it all pointed forward. Come back to center, child's pose. Back to tabletop, let's come into real pigeon now. Tabletop, right knee to right wrist crease, left leg back, pivot. So you're either on a diagonal on the right shin, some of you I know are interested in going flexed, fully parallel to the top of the mat. That's what this looks like. King pigeon would be coming all the way up and grabbing this. I'm not going to go into full. I can feel it's not good for my knee. I also like to take this block and put it under our right glute. So I can either come into sphinx pigeon, stack fist, or all the way down. All the way up, and let's come into a downward dog to switch into the other pigeon. Some people come at it from a dog instead of a uh, tabletop. Left leg in the air, bend the knee, come forward high plank, drop that leg down, pivot the shin on the diagonal, right leg back, untuck. Staring forward. I'm going to take a block under my glute to support that hip. I'm going to be either upright or forearms, or stack fists, or all the way down. And then come all to come on out this time. I'm going to get rid of that block and swing the leg around. With pigeon, there is no huge benefit to your health. If not anything, there are <clears throat> possible damages with holding it for 15 minutes, as some of the classes I used to go to did. Just because you can, doesn't mean you should. So today I'm pulling Namaste cards. These are blessing cards, and we've talked about sometimes how these are a little more new age. Oh, who knows? I pulled this one, no rhyme or reason. It's a beautiful tree, reminds me of spring. A blessed idea. An idea manifests endless blessings but you must act to bring that idea to life. And we talked about, I don't know if it was today or yesterday, dreams. What are my dreams? What haven't I actualized and should I write them down? The time is right. Know that the world is full of ideas floating around aimlessly until someone notices and breathes life into them. This is your time to shine and have faith. And that's the piece, the successful piece to actualizing our dreams is having blind faith. I want you to think about something that has really stood out in your mind, maybe even since your childhood, that you have always wanted to do. You haven't had the time, the resources, whatever the reason is, and maybe now you're gonna have an attempt at that, take a stab at it. Um, even just writing it on paper is the beginning of making it from a dream to reality. Thank you so much for your effort. The good in me sees the good in you. Namaste.